thank you shivali uh, so we have a interesting topic as shivali said uh, i think uh, most of our gynecology friends will be interested to listening to this topic uh, so topic is uh, management of prolactinoma during pregnancy and it has to be a case based approach as the uh, preamble of our uh, session said so uh, to introduce the topic the prevalence of uh, hyperprolactinemia in women seeking medical help is approximately 15 to 20% so any woman who comes uh, with infertility we should always be prepared to look for hyperprolactinemia uh, after excluding pharmacological causes and primary hypothyroidism prolactinomas are the commonest cause of hyperprolactinemia so whenever we have high prolactin we first have to exclude the possibility of the lady taking any pharmacological agents which increase the prolactin levels and for this there are many many drugs many patients uh, self medicate themselves for dyspepsia by taking a combination of ppi and domperidone and they keep taking this and this can enhance the prolactin level and we have seen it may go up as high as uh, 100 to 200 and then primary hypothyroidism should always be excluded before you jump on to make the diagnosis of hyperprolactinemia but once you have excluded these two possibilities then there is a real possibility that patient is harboring a prolactinoma now we know that uh, uh, the the dopamine agonist therapy can uh, achieve a pregnancy in majority of these ladies who have a prolactinoma and there is no scientific evidence that uh, dopamine agonist therapy both bromocriptin as well as cabagrolin can produce any teratogenicity in fetuses but uh, the potential risk is not completely excluded actually there is a, a scarcity of uh, data regarding teratogenicity so we can always say that it's better to avoid giving these drugs unnecessarily when we can uh, proceed without their help Now, cabergolin is definitely superior to bromocaptain in reducing the prolactin level, in reducing the size of tumor, and it's also very uh, well tolerated by most of the patients. And there is also a very good uh, thing that it's a uh, it's a convenience of taking this drug because it can be taken twice a week or just once a week also. But bromocaptain has to be taken two times or three times a day, and uh, but bromo has much larger evidence of uh, uh, safety data regarding its use in pregnancy so whenever possible in pregnancy we will prefer giving bromocriptin over cabagolin now coming to my case uh, mrs as 26 years uh, was attending ob gynae opd for primary infertility and she was married for 4 years and is complaining of secondary amenorrhea for last one year a gynecologist noted galactoria and ordered serum prolactin which came to be 4 to be 246 ng per ml against the normal upper limit of 25 ng per ml so definitely this patient has galactoria she has secondary amenorrhea her prolactin is raised so with this type of uh, background this lady was referred to our department Her, we did her thyroid panel, which came out normal, and there was no history of taking any drug which can produce hyperprolactinemia. We ordered an MRI, and uh, we found that there is one centimeter by one point two centimeter adenoma in left lobe of pituitary, uh, with no supracellular extension. So it was a small intracellular macroadenoma, and there was no supracellular extension of this tumor. And we ordered perimetry, which ruled out any any visual field defects also she was prescribed cabagolin 0.5 mg twice daily and she came for the follow up after 3 months the prolactin levels are very well normalized to 2.88 mg uh, nanogram per ml but she did not resume her menses so she was still amenorrheic this was her major concern that if she, her menses are not resumed how can she conceive and then we seeing that after 3 months prolactin has normalized she still has not resumed menses we ordered urinary urine pregnancy test which to our surprise came positive now question is how will you manage this case so again i'll say to my gynecologist friend that uh, this i think is not uncommon uh, to see such cases 
So prolactinoma in pregnancy. During pregnancy, there is hyperplasia of lactotrophs uh, in pituitary gland due to increasing estrogen levels. So as the estrogen level, uh, they uh, go up and up with the, the term of the pregnancy, the pituitary lactotrophs gets uh, hypertrophy, uh, gets hyperplasia and the volume of pituitary almost doubles uh, during the pregnancy. And this sort of uh, expansion of pituitary gland may be also reflected uh, to the expansion of tumor. And uh, if it is uh, near the optic chiasma, we may also expect some visual loss in the patient. And prolactin levels progressively increase in pregnancy and may reach up to 150 to 300 nanogram per ml in the third trimester. So there is no fun in getting prolactin levels checked during pregnancy. The tumor enlargement may occur. The, the, the good thing is that tumor enlargement can occur, but it occurs only in 3% of cases who have microadenoma. Now, that means that uh, majority of patients of hyperprolactinemia harboring the prolactinomas, they are having microadenomas, and these microadenomas are very, very less likely to grow in size during pregnancy. But on the contrary, when you are having a patient who is having microadenoma, the chances are very high. Almost one third of these patients are likely to see expansion of their tumor mass. Now this enlargement of tumor mass in the macroadenomas may be due to one, you may have discontinued DA therapy after the patient has become pregnant. So this may itself increase the size of macroadenoma. Second, the stimulatory effect of uh, estrogen which goes on higher and higher as the term goes up. Now, MRI or visual and visual field charting should be done before conception to document tumor size and, and it can also serve as baseline for tumor expansion during pregnancy. So it's very important that any patient who is on treatment for uh, prolactin uh, and macroadenomas or microadenomas, they should be asked to undergo MRI and visual field charting and uh, they should be done before they plan their conception. Now, this is the, uh, the uh, usual flow of chart, uh, flow chart for the, for the patients, uh, the prolactinoma in pregnancy. If there is microadenoma, patient should stop the, the bromocaptin or cabagulin as soon as she becomes pregnant and then she keeps in follow-up for possible expansion, which is very, very remote in cases of microadenoma. In cases of macroprolactinoma, you can classify into two categories. One, low risk, where tumor is intracellular, there is no supracellular expansion, and it, the tumor is away from the optic chiasma. Again, you can stop the dopamine, but you have to very aggressively uh, look for any expansion of tumor in these cases. And then there are tumors which are already gone into supracellular space, and they are abutting the optic chiasma. Here, we cannot take risk even minimal expansion of tumor can lead to sight loss. And so we'll continue to give them dopamine agonists throughout the pregnancy. So managing microprolactinoma, discontinued DA therapy once patient, uh, patient's pregnancy is confirmed. Warn the patient of alarming symptoms of tumor enlargement. Basically what we tell the patient is, that she should be on lookout for any unusual headache or progressively increasing headache. And then also some sight, uh, uh, particularly patient is unable to see on the sights and can see only in the, in the center of the vision. Get baseline visual field testing if it is not done before. Follow these patients uh, clinically every two months, though they are following with their gynecologist, with the endocrinologist, they keep meeting them up every two months. There is no role of measuring prolactin levels during pregnancy. Uh, if the patient reports with symptoms suggestive of tumor expansion, get the visual fields and the MRI. And when you're doing MRI, the usual contrast material used is gadolinium. This should be avoided because its safety is not proven for the fetus. Uh, so we should avoid gadolinium. If the tumor growth is evident, you should restart DA therapy and it should be preferably bromocriptin because safety data for bromocriptin are much better than cabagolin in pregnancy. Now coming to 
smaller intracellular macroprolactinoma which are away from the optic chiasma management is the discontinued da therapy once patient is uh, is confirmed with the pregnancy one uh, about the risk of tumor enlargement that these patients actually have a risk that tumor may get enlarged one in three may get enlarged tell her about the need for urgent evaluation if the symptoms appear we have to warn the patient that yes if you have headache immediately report uh, to the doctor and we can take measures to see whether confirm whether the patient has really an enlargement of the tumor mass get baseline visual visual field charting if it is not done before close clinical monitoring with visual field charting every third every every trimester it should be done even if patient is asymptomatic if patient is asymptomatic or you find enlargement of tumor and uh, then you should go for visual ch- field charting and mri immediately if tumor growth is evident you have to restart uh, dopamine agonist therapy and again the bromocriptin is preferred because its safety is proven better than the capagolin now coming to larger adenomas which probably have already expanded into the supracellular space and abutting the optic chiasma advise them that uh, they should not plan pregnancy until definitive therapy is undertaken now this definitive therapy is usually a transpinatal uh, surgery to remove the adenoma da uh, therapy bromocriptin preferred should be continued throughout pregnancy these patients should continue to take uh, bromocriptin and if not tolerated cabagolin throughout pregnancy so that uh, they do not have any tumor expansion if tumor does not respond or patient is unable to tolerate bromocriptin then you should switch to cabagolin uh, majority of studies suggest that cabagolin has a much better tumor reduction uh, as compared to bromocriptin if patient is not responding to da therapy consider transplantal surgery in the second trimester or early delivery in in cases where pregnancy is already advanced enough so these are the drastic measures sometimes you have to take when you see that patient visual fields are uh, really uh, constricted very much and this is a site threatening expansion of tumor mass then you must plan for a transplantal surgery at a good center so back to the case patient had intracellular macroadenoma away from the optic chiasma cabergolin was stopped after 3 months patient complained of progressive headache and so we were alarmed so visual field charting showed bilateral uh, bitemporal constriction of the field though it was not very significant but it was very much there and when we compared the visual field with the previous visual field there was a definite constriction and um, mri was ordered which showed supracellular extension of the tumor patient was started on bromocriptin but could not tolerate it due to nausea vomiting and giddiness so this is a very common side effect when you do full dose of bromocriptin she was then given cabagolin uh, 0.25 mg twice a week which after few weeks was increased to 0.5 mg twice a week perimetry was repeated after 6 weeks later and showed that tumor regression has occurred and the constriction in field has disappeared it was further confirmed by mri patient delivered a healthy baby at full term and it was a normal vaginal delivery so happy ending no congenital malformation no uh, con- uh, no complication during the pregnancy and her site was also saved coming to the next important thing uh, that whether we should allow breastfeeding breastfeeding increases the prolactin level so this is a strong stimulus for the prolactin producing cells to increase prolactin levels whenever there is a suckling from the breast there is no potential risk but no scientific uh, there, there is a potential risk but no scientific evidence that breastfeeding can lead to tumor expansion so there is a potential risk that scientific data are not available in this regard so breastfeeding may be allowed for women with microadenomas or macroadenomas that remain stable in size during the pregnancy so there was if there, there was no tumor expansion during the pregnancy we can allow the lady to go on for the breastfeeding now da uh, which is uh, either bromo or uh, cabagolin which can completely inhibit lactation so once you give da the breast will become dry 
should be withheld until woman is breastfeeding. Should do not give any DA till patient is lactating. Breastfeeding is a contraindicated in woman who had tumor expansion in pregnancy, as most of these women will continue to save DA therapy. Now, after the delivery and lactation, now this is very interesting uh, that pregnancy induces remission of the hyperprolactinemia and half to two third women after discontinuation of DA therapy. So, so suppose a woman who has microadenoma, very often micro, then micro, or even with microadenoma, she becomes pregnant. There are very good chances that her microadenoma or microadenoma is cured. Uh, so this is uh, this may happen in half to two third of women who who became pregnant and then discontinued the formula agonist therapy. In one study, pregnancy has been found to induce remission in 76% of non-tumor hyperprolactinemia. That is, we have hyperprolactinemia, we have excluded exogenous causes, and then we presume that probably our present uh, uh, available imaging could not pick up micro so these are known as non tumor hyperprolactinemia 70% in microprolactinemia and 64% in macroprolactinemia so these many patients can go into long term remission once pet pregnancy has happened another study a complete remission was seen in 100% of non tumor hyperprolactinemia 66% patient with microprolactinemia and 70% in macroadenomas Underlying mechanism are generally being attributed to auto infarction in the tumor. So during pregnancy, there is expansion of the pituitary and the, uh, then there is a shrinkage of pituitary after delivery. During that shrinkage, probably tumor disappears. Now there's also some good Indian data from PGI Chandigarh, Dr. Ashura Stogi, Sanjay Badada and Anil Bhansali has uh, reported this uh, in gynecological endocrinology. Uh, pregnancy and tumor outcome in infertile women with macroprotelectinoma on cabagulin therapy. Now, they studied incidence of fetal malformation, hyperprolactinemia, and tumor course after gestation in infertile, infertile women harboring macroprotelectinoma who received cabagulin therapy. So, they particularly took up uh, macroprolactinoma only women. Now, out of 48 pregnancies, 25 received capgolin throughout pregnancy. So these were probably patients who had supracellular extension of the tumor and they, they kept it in group A. And 23, the capgolin was discontinued after the confirmation of pregnancy. They were in the group B. And incidence of abortion, stillbirth, low birth weight, and congenital malformation was similar in two groups. That means capgolin is not producing any of these complications, either of the pregnancy or in the fetal congenital malformation. Now, in both the groups, nearly 40% patient went into remission after hyperprolactinemia, uh, of remission of hyperprolactinemia in both the groups. So that means that 40% uh, patients who were harboring macroprolactinoma and they were becoming pregnant and then when they were uh, they were uh, told to stop cabagolin or they stop pergolin in the early pregnancy also, their prolactin levels normalized without the help of any drug. Continuation of cabagolin during gestational does not influence the post-pregnancy recurrence of hyperprolactinoma or tumor remission. So whether patients were on cabagolin throughout pregnancy or they were not, they had almost equal chances of going into remission. So take home message, prolactinomas are common cause of infertility in women. The DA therapy, with DA therapy, most such women can become pregnant. It is very low in microadenomas, but very significantly high, more than 30% in microadenomas. DA pet therapy should be withheld after confirmation of pregnancy in cases with microadenomas and smaller intracellular microadenomas. These cases should be carefully watched for any tumor expansion and DA may be reintroduced if, there is, uh, if it is so, that is, it is uh, there is expansion of tumor. In macrodenomas with supracellular extension threatening optic asthma, DA therapy should be continued throughout the pregnancy. Bromocryptin is preferred over cabergolin in pregnancy due to larger safety data available. Lactation can be allowed in women whose tumor remained stable during the pregnancy. Pregnancy can induce remission of hyperprolactinemia and tumor in nearly half the women 
who are harboring genoma. So thank you very much.